Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap, and now here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. I have the great pleasure today of interviewing Autumn Witt Boyd. She is an experienced intellectual property lawyer who helps high achieving, ambitious entrepreneurs reach their big goals. The AWB firm is the go-to for businesses selling online courses, digital downloads, and online tools for business. Autumn has helped Amy Porterfield, Being Boss, Melissa Griffin, and I'm going to add Kathy Guggenauer <laughs> and many more grow and protect their online empires. Autumn also hosts the Legal Roadmap podcast, which is amazing. There is so much value in that podcast. Um, on that podcast, she teaches business owners how to protect their rights and stay out of legal hot water. She lives in Chattanooga, Tennessee with her husband, twin boys and daughter. Welcome, Autumn. Thank you, Kathy. I'm glad you threw your name in there in that list. I was going <laughs> to add it if you didn't. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I honestly don't even remember how we got connected. Do you? Uh, we started because you needed a legal resource for your group. And that was how we initially uh, and, but I don't know who recommended me to you or how that I don't either. connection happened. I don't remember but, how I found you originally, but, I'm but glad. then we, uh, me too. Oh my gosh. Are you kidding me? Wow. Um, you're amazing. Number one. I mean, if you're not looking at YouTube and you want to go see Autumn, she's beautiful, perky, young, and <laughs> she has the personality of like a movie star, not like a lawyer. And I'm sorry, I'm, I'm being, um, okay. you know, stereotypical there, but a lot of lawyers, when they talk, I don't even understand the words coming out of their mouths. Yeah. And we you're not like that easy. at all. Yeah. You do. Thank you. You do. Thank you. Yeah. So I really, really love working with you. Um, and, you know, like most of my podcasts, I like to start with your backstory. And I don't know your backstory. So would you <laughs> share with us here on this Dare to Leap podcast, what got you interested in being a lawyer or um, what caused you to start your own law firm? That journey I'd love to hear more about. Yeah, all the things. Uh, so I'll start with what got me interested in being a lawyer. I went to college. This, I'll make a long story short. Uh, but I went to college wanting to be an opera singer. So I have a background in music and theater. That's why I have, you know, I, I like to do video. It was because, right. You're like yes. a movie star. <laughs> I was person. right. I'm a big personality. <laughs> Um, but I've always also loved to write and research and get to know people, um, very outgoing. And so I got to college, I went to Indiana university, which is renowned for its music school. And I realized really quickly that I was out of my depth, that I was not good enough to hang with the big dogs, uh, which was a great thing to learn early. Um, and so I shifted pretty quickly and ended up getting a degree in journalism, which is, as it turns out, a lot of the same skills as being a lawyer. Um, it's writing, it's research, it's interviewing people, um, it's, you know, figuring out how to tell a good story. Um, and so I enjoyed that, but kind of like with the music thing, I figured out pretty quickly that the career trajectory was not necessarily what I was interested in. It's a lot of like, you started a really small newspaper if you're in print, which is what I was interested in. Um, you start out at a small one and then you move every two years and then you kind of gradually inch your way up. Um, and it's not a great living either. Uh, I realized pretty quickly. And so I kind of looked at that and I was like, this is going to be a slog. What else can I do? I had already learned. I don't know at what point I learned that like, we need to capitalize on our strengths <laughs> if things are difficult. And that was kind of the music thing. It wasn't easy. Writing to me has always been easy. Getting to know people, interviewing people has always been really easy. Um, so I kind of looked around and said, what else could I do with this skill set? And law school seemed interesting and fun. So I kind of shifted course at that point and went to law school thinking, oh, I'll be like a music lawyer because I have this background in music. Um, I grew up near Nashville, Tennessee, not far from where I am now. Um, and so there's a big music industry there. So I went to Vanderbilt in Nashville. Um, they've got a great, um, you know, intellectual property program. Um, so that was kind of my dream. Um, another example of, you know, 
what you think you want may not be what you actually want. I went and interned at like a music row law firm and it, it was all contracts and it was very boring actually. Like you think it's exciting. Um, but it day to day is just a lot of like negotiating, um, and drafting contracts. And, um, again, that just didn't seem very much fun to me. Um, but since I am a natural performer, I love to talk. I love to, um, you know, be on stage, um, uh, being a litigator. So being in the courtroom was more attractive. So I decided to go that route. Um, so I worked for a judge right out of law school. That's what brought me to Chattanooga. Thought I would stay here two years. I'm still here like 16 years later. Um, but I, um, you know, just had a very normal lawyer career after that. So I will pause and tell me if you have any questions because I can just talk and talk. <laughs> no, that's fabulous. I love that. I did not know you were an opera singer. Oh yeah. my God. Never for real. But yeah, I still like, you know, I joke that now I just sing with my kids and in the shower, <laughs> but <laughs> still, still something I enjoy. Yeah. Um, you know, I have these events that I put on and before COVID, I did a live one in April and then virtual one in October. And now we're doing April and October virtual. And we always do something fun. Uh, it's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We always do something on Saturday evening. And this last one, we did a talent contest. Oh, how fun. I thought you were going to say karaoke, but that's even better. Yeah. Well, at the next live one, we're going to do karaoke. Love it. Oh, I, I, that was- Oh, oh, oh <laughs> so to edit that out. <laughs> Any people listening- you did not hear that. <laughs> Darn. I can't keep oh, secrets. They know that Autumn. It's I can't right. keep secrets. But next time I do a talent contest, I'm going to invite you. I'm there. Okay, cool. Because you know, what really was amazing was the amazing talent that was there. We had singers that were awesome. We had people that wrote their own songs and sang them. Oh, wow. We had, uh, yeah, we had pianist. We had a bagpiper. I can't even, in my little group of yeah. like 400 women, we have three bagpipers. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? That's so we fantastic. have so much talent and it is yeah. so much fun. I, yeah. I mean, I thought it would be like goofy talents, right? Mm -hmm. And it wasn't, it was real like talent. Legit. So yeah. um, you're invited. You're invited. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So you, so you're like, and I totally hear you. I call it the low hanging fruit. I'm yeah, like, okay. Yeah. So I don't want to keep banging my head against the wall. Right. If this is going to be really difficult and I'm never going to really make money, show me the thing that I can enjoy <laughs> and make money down. Right. Right. Because right, right. there is, that is available. Yes. Um, so I hear you on that. And so you became a lawyer mm -hmm. and then um, you worked, you did the boring part up front I with did the, the boring part. And yes. And then when you, did you say, you know what, I need to start my own law firm. And how did you, cause that's pretty scary. I would think it was or, terrifying. Was it? <laughs> yeah. Well, fill yeah. us in. How did that feel yeah. and what helped you face that fear and do it anyway? So I would say I it, like seven years ago, I would have said I was the, the most risk averse person. I was did not have an entrepreneurial bone in my body. I didn't even really see myself as a leader. I just felt like I was a really good worker bee. So I had left a law firm in Chattanooga and gone into a small law firm and we just did copyright litigation. So it was work from home. It was kind of a dream job for a lawyer, um, super flexible. I had had, I had my twins while I was working there. Um, but it got to the point where I was traveling a ton. So we were litigating all over the country. Um, and my husband's amazing, but he kind of, you know, missed me and the kids missed me. And I was working 60 and 80 hour weeks. And even if you're at home in your yoga pants, like that gets old. So it, it kind of reached, um, you know, you said about banging your head against the wall. I felt like I hit a brick wall where I was just like, this is, it was up or out. Like I, there was no real path for me to do anything differently at that firm. Um, so I looked around and Chattanooga is a small town. I didn't really want to move. We don't have a lot of intellectual property work here. So I looked around and there wasn't really anything appealing, um, to do, you know, either going in-house at a company, or I even thought about maybe not being a lawyer for a little bit, but I, I did some soul searching. I, um, I always recommend this. I read Danielle Laporte's desire map book and I like did all the worksheets, uh, which was really great of uncovering, like, what did I like? Um, and that showed me that I didn't have to throw away, you know, this very expensive legal education and all my experience that there were pieces I enjoyed. Um, 
And so, yeah, with my husband's encouragement, he's also an entrepreneur. Uh, I decided to start my own law firm and I thought it was just going to be me, like little me just working in my home office. Like I had been at my last job. Um, and then it's grown from there. So, but yes, it was terrifying. <laughs> But you believed in yourself and you did that work in, in Daniel Laporte's book, which is awesome. I did something very similar when I decided to leave my corporate job mm -hmm. because like you, I, I didn't have an entrepreneurial bone in my body. Yeah. I was so risk adverse. I mean, you know, I was 40. Yeah. And now I look back and I think, dang, I was incredibly brave <laughs> to quit that 20 yeah. year corporate job. Yeah just quit and started on my own. I had never done it before. You were incredibly brave yeah. also. Thank and you. guess what? We women, we've got this power. Yes. Yes. Much yeah. more than I think we are often underestimated and we underestimate ourselves. So I'm every, I look back and I say, Oh my, you know, one thing that helped me leave was the fact that I knew I could go get a job. Like if it didn't work, I am employable. <laughs> I can go find another job. Mm -hmm. um, so it was scary, but it also wasn't like I'm lighting everything on fire and like burning it to the ground. Um, I was yeah. careful not to burn any bridges. Um, but yeah. you know, now that it's worked and is successful, I I'm like, Oh my gosh, I hope I never have to get another job. <laughs> I would <laughs> like to keep doing this forever. Well, when I did it, I, I did burn all the bridges, not because I made people mad or anything, but because I quit a corporate job at 40 that there's already ageism and yeah, you can't, I, it's hard to I, go back. Yeah. Right. Right. So, you know, I did it knowing that I wasn't, I wasn't really almost unemployable at that time. Mm -hmm. And now I am 100% unemployable. <laughs> I'm 63. I've done nothing. In, in, this is literally how the corporate world looks at, at me. Cause I know, you know, I've periodically throughout my, you know, entrepreneurial time, I've gone back and applied for jobs. <laughs> they literally say to me, Oh, you haven't had a job since 1996. Sure. You've built a million dollar business, but right. that's nothing. You didn't have a job. We don't even right. want to interview you. I'm not kidding yeah. you. No, I mean, it was I, shocking. I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> so I am unemployable, which is a okay by me. Um, <laughs> it's a good incentive to make things work, right? Absolutely. Um, you know, you don't even have to worry about it anymore. You just do it. Um, but I'm so proud of you, Autumn. And I would like for you to talk a little bit about your current business model and, you know, how you, because I've had the privilege of interviewing your assistant already, and she's amazing. Also, Brooke, and she talked a little bit about that. And um, I would steal her away from you, except You're not I allowed. that kind of stuff to <laughs> friends. <laughs> and she, of course, wouldn't come. No, she's So wonderful. tell us about your uh, thinking about how you built your business and how you run it. Yeah. So I really did start out thinking, oh, I'm just going to be a solo attorney and I can have some clients and make a little money and it'll be fine. Uh, but I am pretty uh, type A, uh, big dreamer, overachiever. And so once things kind of started clicking and I looked around and I'd kind of fallen into this online marketing, online business world that we both exist in, um, started working with clients who were selling online courses or doing other interesting things, um, you know, all very virtual, which I was excited about and, um, you know, worked well for me. I kind of was like, well, what if I did build something bigger? And it really was just kind of that, like, huh, I wonder if I could, like, I think that would be fun and interesting. Um, and so it was very slow and steady, um, kind of Brooke was my first hire. Um, and it was also again, terrifying because, you know, now I have someone on payroll, even though she was a contractor at first. Um, but, you know, I have to, I have to pay someone other than me and make sure that this really keeps going. Um, it's kind of like we, you put on your big girl panties when you hit that stage. Um, but I hired slow and just as I saw the need for it. So Brooke was my first hire. And then um, I kind of hit a ceiling of the amount of legal work that I could do. Um, and that was really scary because a lawyer is an expensive hire. <laughs> so trying to figure out Oh, am I, and I, and I was really priced too low at that point. So we had to do kind of some rejiggering once I wasn't actually paying someone else to do the legal work. It showed me that <laughs> <laughs> my business model, because we started out, I did really all flat fees. And that was a lot of trial and error of figuring out like how long will something take? And oh yeah, all of that was a big learning yes. curve. Um, 
Yeah, but we've grown slowly and steadily just as the client demand was there. We've added people. Um, and I'll talk in a minute about kind of the other part of my business, which is we sell a digital product that are contract templates. Um, but yeah, on the law firms, and I almost say we have, it's like two businesses. Um, but on the law firm side, it's been like building an agency, just kind of slowly and slowly, but surely we're up to three attorneys now, including me. And then us support staff that takes really good care of our clients. So that's always been at the top of my mind. Like I want to make sure we have enough capacity that thing, we're not dropping balls and things aren't falling through the cracks and we can provide a really nice client experience. So that's kind of been my focus. Well, and as one of your clients, I will tell you the experience is top notch. Good, good, good. Yes. Um, the- <laughs> There has not been a time, and, and especially in the beginning, I asked a lot of really, really stupid questions. No. And, and I would, I know Brooke has answered one question at least three times now. <laughs> and I'll email him like, I, I know you answered this several times already. I can't find the answer. Would you answer again? And she's always so nice and like, it yeah. doesn't, it's no big deal. Please don't hesitate to email And she always responds quickly and kindly and thoroughly. Oh my gosh. That's the other thing about your company when, and I don't know about other people. Well, I do know about other working with other lawyers and other people, because the answer is usually really short clipped (laughs) and you know what I'm saying? I do. They don't want to give you all the details, right? You, I don't even have to ask a second question. I get everything needed with one question and and then you know a follow-up I thought about two more things and (laughs) wanted to include those also it's things I didn't think about so your customer service is amazing it really is yeah top notch now I think at one point you had an all women business. It still and is. And do you still? Woo! Yes. So fill us in on that thought process. Yeah. So it was, um, I'm a girly girl. If you were watching some video, you see I'm like an all pink with the bow in my hair <laughs> <laughs> um, or scarf. Um, Very but, cute and perky. Thank you. Yes. I, Even your earbuds are pink. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Um, I love, you know, I have a lot of girlfriends. I'm a girly girl. I love hanging out with women. Um, I love serving women. Most of our clients are women, not all, but a lot of them. Um, I think we have a pretty female vibe. We are, like you said, nurturing and warm. And, uh, you know, if you're looking for an attorney, that's a bulldog and is really going to just like bulldoze the competition. Like that is not us. (laughs) I very much believe in, you know, feminine energy and you get more bees with honey and all of that. So it was pretty natural that I would also attract women as employees. And I will say in our last hire, we did get a dude who applied. Um, he, w- he did not make the cut, but there was a chance <laughs> that we might not. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, early on, I did like have this dream of what if I could, I called it my all girl band. Like what if I could put together this really amazing group of women? Um, and intentionally I've hired women who maybe didn't fit, like you said, trying to go back to corporate, um, women who maybe took a break to raise kids or needed right. more flexibility or wanted part-time hours versus full-time, especially in law. It is a very old school industry still it's changing. And mm-hmm. I'm hoping the pandemic will maybe change it even more, but at, it, you know, if you want part-time hours, that's a 40 hour week job. <laughs> it's not really part-time, uh, you know, full-time right. lawyer job is 60 to 80 hours a week. So it's just, it's really hostile to women in a lot of ways. And I kind of, I wanted to build the place that I wanted to work, you know, basically and, and mm-hmm. surround myself with other people who were interested in those same sorts of things. So yeah, so far we are an all girl band. No, not to say that we, we don't discriminate in hiring now that I've got an employment <laughs> right. attorney on my team, <laughs> we do not discriminate, but so far the best fits have, have been women and it's wonderful mm-hmm. and people are helpful and collegial and there's no drama and it is a wonderful place to work. I'm really proud of what we built. Yeah. And, and as a client, I really love working with you in that environment because I think um, a lot of times there's backstabbing, there's, um, uh, oh, I'm, I'm blanking on the word, um, egos. That's what I was trying to think of. There's a lot of ego involved. And as another uh, female entrepreneur, I I don't like that stuff. (laughs) You know, yeah, that is not, that is not how I operate. I am all about cooperation, not mm-hmm. competition. Yeah. yeah. And um, I literally just had somebody email me this week and they said, I see you're going to be um, 
on Shannon Mattern's summit and I see you're promoting it. Isn't she your competitor? I don't understand. Can you explain? And it's really easy when you cooperate rather than compete, everybody wins. Yeah. And there is so, so much and pie. I feel, there is enough pie yes. for everybody. Yes. Exactly. Thank you. That's exactly <laughs> what I like to say. If you think I could there's not a, eat all the pie. <laughs> Even no, if I wanted if you to. Think there's a, if there's a set amount of pie and you need to hurry and get your piece, you are, you are, you have a scarcity mindset because, um, and the other thing, Autumn, that, that we have actually brought to light and that I already knew, and I'm sure you did too, is that even though there are a lot of people in this online world, it is really a small world. Yes. Because you and I have realized how many colleagues we have in common. <laughs> yes. They've, we've been in masterminds, <laughs> like one person apart. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And that happens a lot in this online world. Mm-hmm. Um, so you, you know, you don't want to make enemies. You want to be cooperative. You want to be helpful and supportive because you don't know who you, who the person you're talking to belittling or, you know, treating poorly knows. Yeah. Exactly. And it's just and there helpful. is for sure somebody. No. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to be like that, period. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I will tell There's you enough I'm, of that. Go yeah. Ahead. I'm friends with a lot of my competitors and we refer clients back Me and too. forth. I mean, it's, Me it's too. wonderful. And I can it ask is. them questions if I have a tricky situation or, you know, Hey, do you know somebody I need X, Y, Z? It is, yep. it is more abundant. It is more positive. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I am an affiliate for almost all of my competitors. Yeah, that's great. You're like, if, if I'm not the right fit, go over here and, and I'll still. Ex- that's exactly yeah. what I do. Exactly. Yeah. And the only ones I'm not an affiliate for is that, you know, for whatever reason, they chose not to um, partner with me because, mm-hmm. you know, I really, I'm with you in this virtual world, there's tons of opportunities. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that a little bit, because I know that your um, office, some people work virtually, some people aren't in Chattanooga. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to hear what made you decide to do it that way. And this was before COVID. Yes, we've been virtual since day one. (laughs) Yeah. And how that's working out for you, the pros and cons. Yeah, absolutely. So I was kind of lucky in my last law, like, lawyer job, my last law firm job. Uh, It was a virtual law firm and I went to work for them in 2008. So this was really ahead of the curve at the time, especially for law firms. I mean, we, we couldn't use, and we all used Macs and like, there was no law firm software for Macs. So we were kind of cobbling it together, figuring it out. Uh, But I was at that job for seven years and saw, you know, we were some of the first users of Dropbox for file sharing and other things. You know, I saw how you could run a law firm with a what I now call kind of a distributed workforce, people in different places. My boss was in Philadelphia. My other boss was in Colorado and our employees were all over the place. So, but we made it work and it was, you know, trial and error, but it was fine. Um, And so I think coming from that and having seen that, yes, we can do a very traditional business in a non-traditional way. um, I started virtual, you know, I had, I was used to working with clients all over the country and doing uh, back then it was Skype. (laughs) Now it's zoom, Um, you know, just having phone calls or having Skype or zoom calls. um, It wasn't a big deal and doing things over email. You know, I wasn't used to meeting people in the office really. So I started off virtual and then um, my initial client base was kind of local because I, I leaned on my network when I started my business. So I let everyone know here, you know, Hey, I'm hanging out my shingle. I'm available. Um, And so I did get some local clients and they wanted to meet in person. And so that was a little tricky because I did not want them to come to my house. (laughs) Um, So I did get a little office. It was literally, I think it was like 12 by 12, like this little shoebox of an office. It had a desk and like a chair for me and two chairs for the clients. And that was it. (laughs) Um, And it was in a little business incubator. So it didn't cost very much, but I felt like if I'm charging the rates that I was charging, I wanted it to be, you know, even from then, from the beginning, I wanted it to be a nice experience. I didn't want people to feel like we have to meet at Starbucks. Like that did not feel Mm -hmm. good to me (laughs) as a client experience. Um, So, but the, when I added Brooke, you know, she lives in Chattanooga, but she's about 20, 25 minutes away from where I live. So we're not super close. Um, And she's got kids that she's taken here and there and, you know, running drop-offs. And so I, I knew that I didn't need her to be in person all the time. 
But then I will tell you, there were certain things that I figured out I did need some administrative support in person, like scanning my notes from client calls, um, scanning documents that came in, mailing, th- mailing out trademark certificates to clients. Like there were just things that I was doing that were not a good use of my time simply because my assistant was not in the office. Um, so Brooke started coming into the office, maybe one day a week, this was before pandemic. And then we ended up um, bringing on um, a woman who's in college, who is also a part-time nanny for our family. And she now does that in office stuff. So it has worked out really well. Uh, That's but yeah, awesome. we have, I love that. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, being flexible and just because you start virtual doesn't mean it has to be all virtual. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, we, our newest attorney Shantae is in New York. Um, our paralegal is in North Carolina and it's, it's been pretty seamless. I mean, we've got, we use Asana, we use all the online tools um, Mm -hmm. and our business runs really well. It's not, you know, it was funny when we brought on the paralegal because she was, um, had been in a trust and estates paralegal before she worked with us. So she was used to having this like um, folder, (laughs) a file that you would like (laughs) with a checklist on the front that you would like move from one desk to another while you're working. And she was like, how am I going to track the projects? And so we've basically recreated that folder in Asana and we have the checklist. Yeah. Um, yeah. And everyone can see it instead of having to hunt in somebody's that. office for it under right. a pile of papers. Yes. Um, yeah. So yeah, we, we have figured it out, but it's worked really well. And I will tell you, you know, you mentioned pandemic, like we didn't miss a beat. We were already set up and it was, you know, I was the only one in the office for a lot of weeks. <laughs> Nobody else. How was happy were in. you? Oh, How happy gosh. were you when that hit that you did have a virtual staff? Yeah, it was phenomenal. I mean, I w- I'm in all these lawyer Facebook groups and people were losing their minds. Um, like, I can't go to the office. How am I going to survive? Um, right. So they didn't yeah, already we, have were, we were ready to go. Yeah. 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 And I, Congratulations I helped a lot of friends <laughs> saying, these are the systems Aww. we use if you're not sure what yeah. to do. Yeah. Yeah. That's fabulous. I would not have you wished are, you for the are a really, You are a really good girlfriend. <laughs> And I would really like to come hang out with you. Actually, when the pandemic, when the pandemic is over, I know for sure there are going to be opportunities for somebody we know going to put on a mastermind or an event <laughs> we will and meet we'll up. both go. I yes. know. I, I, I have with no the champagne. <laughs> and I will be there with the white wine. I am not a and champagne a crown. girl. Mm-hmm. Oh, of course. Some kind of headwear. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. So congratulations for having that forward thinking um, in a very traditional business. Yeah. Uh, And that is just amazing. And for being so thoughtful and helping others uh, who didn't have that already in place. That's really, that's really amazing. And I know that's just the kind of person that you are and the kind of business that you run. Yeah. I will tell you early in pandemic, Kathy, when Mm -hmm. it was crickets, like nobody was calling us. (laughs) I was like, we might mm-hmm. have to shut this thing down. Um, <laughs> I leaned into I think that. everybody thought that. Right. About and their business back yeah, then. Yeah. I really leaned into that. Like, okay, just how can I be helpful? How can I, mm-hmm. you know, contribute whatever I have to contribute? Because there's not any client work to do right now. And that has paid off in spades. So I'm, I'm just such a believer in that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What you put out into the universe comes back. That's how I look at it. And whatever you focus on that's what you get more of. Yeah. If you focus on being, you know, helpful and amazing to others, you get that back. So congratulations. That's what we want. Yeah. So I want to talk a little bit about the different ways that you help your clients, because for me, that was one of the things that was missing was that I didn't really understand what all a lawyer could do for me. All I could think about when it came to a lawyer was big dollar figures and scary. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Lawyer's going to be scary. They're going to cost a whole lot. I'm not going to understand what they say. I literally had that whiny voice in my brain when I thought about it. So talk a little bit about what you offer. Yeah. So we are, I call us kind of a full service law firm for online businesses. So I'm not going to negotiate your lease for you. If you run a pizza place, like I'm not going to deal with health regulations, but if you run an online business, we can do pretty much everything legal you need. So that looks like a lot of different things, which I like, it kind of keeps us busy and interesting. Um, It might mean setting up an LLC or a corporation. It might mean helping you build your team. So we have a lawyer on our team now who just works on employment issues. 
um, especially if you're in California or one of those other states that has really tricky employment laws. Um, a lot of entrepreneurs don't realize, you know, what a big risk that is. And so we help a lot with that handbooks, all that kind of things. Um, and then I personally, my background is intellectual property. So I help people, um, as we have done for you, Kathy, protect their content. So if you have a course that you're selling and making a lot of money off of, a lot of people don't think about it, but if that is copied, you really need it to be registered with the copyright office if you want to be able to take action against someone. So we do a lot of that trademark registration. Um, and then just, I, I like to say I'm kind of um, conciliary. <laughs> I like to be like the first person you call when you have a new idea and you're like, will this work? Or I want to do a contest or I want to do a new way of working with affiliates or, you know, I, I say, bring me all your crazy ideas and let's make sure to vet them and make sure because the bigger your business gets, the, the more risk there is, you know, if you're early on, I'm a big fan of proportional legal protection. So you don't need to do all of this on day one, but as you hit that, you know, mid six to seven figure mark, uh, there are more things that can go wrong. And, um, we like to help you avoid mistakes. <laughs> so that's, you know, it may mean, you know, we had a client this week who was hiring someone to help her like manage her home. And so we reviewed that contract for her just to make sure it was all set up correctly. So it mm -hmm. looks like a lot of different things, but it's, it's fun and interesting and no day is the same as the day before. Yeah. And, um, I'll tell you one of the things that I really love that you offer, and I'm not going to name it correctly. So you can tell me what the name of it is, but it's that initial thing that you do where you go through the whole business. Yes. And legal you see, roadmap what do you planning call? session? Legal roadmap planning session mm -hmm. and autumn spins and spent ju we just did this because I came in kind of in an odd way uh, it's okay. with autumn. And um, so we just did this for my business and she went through step by step. What about this? What about this? Are you covered with this? What about this? And it was it was really nice to have that double check to see, do I have everything in place? And there were some things I didn't and still mm -hmm. haven't pushed the final button on yet um, because I'm a procrastinator. And, <laughs> and she's also very patient. And so is her staff. Yes. Um, and what I've enjoyed also is when I feel ready to take that next step, you guys are there, but you're mm -hmm. not like, You've got pushy. to spend all of this money with me right now to get all of this done. No, yeah. let's take baby steps. What's mm -hmm. the first thing you need? Now, yeah. what's the next thing? Yeah. And I really value that. Good. Yeah, that is that has become now the only way to work with us is to start with that session. And the ah, clients are loving okay. it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it is awesome. It is awesome. Um, so what I did was I found your templates. Yes, it, which is... <laughs> I would say for most businesses up to mid six figures, even to seven figures is really the foundational legal thing you need is solid contracts in your business. And those templates are affordable and easy to use. And they are a really great starting point. Yeah. Incredibly affordable, very easy to use. And I, I can't remember if I shared this with you, but I know the listeners on insurance with them, which is I had literally been searching for years for what you offer. And I had found a couple of different ones. In fact, I bought a different one, totally different type. And that customer services wasn't there mm -hmm. and the support wasn't there. And my, you know, I, I teach um, women how to create their own virtual assistant online businesses. And part of my program includes how to set those contracts up, how to have the um, legal documents you need for your website. And they were complaining. I, we don't like the way this other mm. company that you're giving us, you know, I paid for it, but it wasn't working well. And I said, let me go back and do some new research. And I dug in again. This is literally like five years we're talking about here. Oh my gosh. And I know. And so I'm so glad when I found yours and I was like, this, this is so easy. And not only do you have every template that is needed, for any online business, um, you also, you can buy them individually, you can buy them in a package, you can buy the whole thing, whatever you need. And this is the piece that to me, I mean, it's all good, but this is the piece that is amazing. Once you buy that, if it changes, Autumn's company emails you and says, hey, this updated, here's the new one. Yeah. What? 
Nobody does that. Yeah. <laughs> that well, I know I, I really want our template purchasers to feel as cared for as our one-on-one clients and to feel like yeah. they're getting an amazing experience as well. So yeah, and we just, oh my goodness, we just did a promotion for the templates in January and I went through and read all of them again <laughs> and freshened them all up. They are really and, good. Yeah, I, really I, and good. as I was I was reading them, I was like, these are really good. Like They are really I'm good. very proud of them. Because I have yeah. the other companies. There was actually two other companies that I used and I know the difference. I'm yeah. not a lawyer, so I don't know the legal difference, but I know the difference in how to be able to use them. Yeah, yeah. No. And they're written in and, as plain English as we can, as easy to understand as we can. Um, while still yeah. protecting you. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and the people that are in my program, oh my gosh, they, they have been like thanking me Yay! so much for partnering with you and getting these templates for them because they're not complaining anymore. Now they're like, oh, this is so easy. This good, makes good, sense. Good. We love the templates. You mean we get an email if we do this? Yes. Oh my gosh. And they can literally use them because I think that's the other piece of a lot of times what happens with legal stuff is you get it, but then you don't use it because right. it's not easy to mm-hmm. use. It's overwhelming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So thank you for being amazing in, in all of those levels. Yes. Thank you. Well, we're trying to get the yeah. word out more about the templates. It's like I mentioned, it's kind of two businesses. And so when we're really business busy on the one-on-one side, I haven't had the energy to per- just, you know, the contract templates are there, but telling people about them. So I appreciate you sharing them. Um, and we brought on yeah. Sarah Kate, who I think you've talked to, who's now our full-time marketing yes manager who is really, Mm -hmm. we're doing all kinds of fun things. So we're, we're in Shannon summit as well. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my gosh. I love it. I didn't even, I know. Yeah. (laughs) We were like one degree of separation, Kathy. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Autumn. Maybe we are the same person. I know. (laughs) You know, I'm not going to I know. I'm not going to say we are, but we have never been um, in the same together room. in the same room. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I could literally be your mother. <laughs> well, I That's how to, I, uh, far apart in age we are. Yeah, but yeah. Um, and I would be so proud to be your mother. Um, you're just amazing. Thank you. So um, there was something else I want. Oh, um, the URL. If anybody wants to go check out those templates, what's the URL for that? Yep. It's on our website. It's awbfirm.com. It's just my initials, Autumn Whitboyd, F-I-R-M.com. And if you are at all interested, go check them out. You will not be disappointed. And it won't be one of those where you're like, how do I look at these? How do I find them? What am I looking at? It is so straightforward and so easy. So I cannot recommend them highly enough other than to say I've, I have all of them and use most of them in yeah. one way or another. Well, and I'll tell um, you, I'll, I'll give one other resource on our website, yeah. Kathy. And this yeah. is actually the same checklist that you and I used during that legal roadmap planning session. We have mm-hmm. as a freebie on our website. So if you want oh, to take awesome. a look and maybe audit your own business, see maybe what you're missing, you can go to awbfirm.com slash checklist and you can grab that for free. I love it. Yes. I love it. I love it. So, and I highly recommend doing that because then you can see for yourself what you need to have at some point as your business is growing. And then you know who to go to if you need that help. So one of the things that I wanted to mention is a mistake that I made um, when I was first um, growing my business. And I don't want others to make this. And I'm sure when I tell you what this is, you'll be like, yeah, I've heard this before. And the mistake was I went cheap. Mm -hmm. So I thought a lawyer is a lawyer, stupid lawyer's not a lawyer. I know that very well now. And I, I shopped for inexpensive and, um, I was very first trying to get a trademark. That's when I first reached out to a lawyer. And that lawyer messed my trademark up so badly. I almost didn't get the trademark. I was almost banned from, and banned is probably the wrong word, but prevented from getting that trademark for five years because of the way they presented that trademark. And it's not like I didn't pay them significant amount. I did. It was like a thousand dollars to get me in trouble. (laughs) And that's when I went, oh. I know I get what I pay for. What am I thinking? (laughs) So 
can you talk a little bit about, um, well, and one more thing on that. Um, I highly recommend, this is what I say now. If you think, oh, I don't really need a lawyer. I can do this on my own. Whatever it is, this legal thing, <laughs> you will save money and save yourself and save your business by getting that legal advice up front. So just like Autumn said, if you've got a new idea, if you're thinking, maybe I need some legal advice on this, get the legal advice because Autumn will tell you, yeah, no, you're cool. Here's the only risk you'd have. Or, hey, you really do need some support here. And here's what I think you need. She's going to give you great advice versus if you're off on your own and you're like me, I can't even think in the way a lawyer thinks. I think in a practical way and the law isn't like that. (laughs) whenever I read something legal, I think I understand it. And then I talk to Autumn and she explains it to me. I'm like, well, that's just the opposite of what I thought it was <laughs> because I, I literally have saved myself agony and money and time by getting that advice up front. So do yeah. you hear that often? Autumn? Yes. Yes. And I'm a huge advocate of like, not every business needs a trademark and not every business needs to do all the things. Um, but what I think most businesses need in, you know, the first couple of years is to connect with a lawyer that you like and feel like you can talk to establish that relationship. relationship. Yes. Maybe do a one hour planning session so they can just kind of get their eyes on your business. Um, because you will have a sticky situation pop up. It is not when it is not if it's when, um, you'll have a student who's acting out or you'll have somebody making a refund request, or you'll have a, you know, a misunderstanding with a client, you know, it's just going to happen. And then you will have someone that you can quickly reach out to. It'll be, you know, you'll spend a little bit of money, but it's not going to be like, Oh, now I'm in panic trying to find someone. And I don't eat now I'm having to exactly. vet people and, Oh, it's just a nightmare. Right. It, it, it is absolutely. absolutely a professional advisor you should have on your team. You don't have to use them all the time. It's, you know, I'm not trying to finance my next Lamborghini for all of your <laughs> listeners, <laughs> but, um, you know, it is something that should be in your budget. You know, if you're just starting out, maybe it's $500 for a template for two, that's two templates. It, um, you know, it doesn't have to be a lot of money, but yeah, you, you need to be building it in. And as you grow, that number should be getting bigger. Cause you're going to have more risk, more exposure mm-hmm. and you'll need a little mm-hmm. more help and that's okay. Yeah. And as a percentage of what my expenses are, my legal fees are very low. Um, you you're know, probably paying to, a lot more for software and your website and all the other things. Yeah. Marketing. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Um, but now that I do have that relationship, I can be proactive. Mm-hmm. And when I see something coming up that I think, Ooh, is that an issue? Um, and I've already reached out to you on a couple of these things and you've already given me advice on a couple of things. And then I'm reassured. Yes, I'm okay. Or, Hey, no, I really need to think about this mm-hmm. or this risk could be bigger than what you want to take. If you yeah. go in whatever direction you're thinking about going in and all of those things are so incredibly valuable. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we even, I mean, I hate to be a deal. I hate to be a dream killer, but sometimes we will say like a client will come to us with a book deal or an idea for a collaboration or something. And we're like, this is really not a great idea. (laughs) Like, I really don't think you should do this. And of course, you know, I, I'm not the decider. I'm just the advice giver. Right. Um, right. But yeah, it's better to know that on the front end or to at least go in with your eyes wide open. Absolutely. Because, um, there are a lot of people who have a lot of ideas on how they can uh, use you Uh (laughs) to earn a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And then they, you know, they're uh, not looking out for your interests. Yeah. (laughs) No, they poach all your clients or something like that. I had somebody try to do that to me. Yeah. Um, Nip that one in the bud. Yeah. And, um, but you have to have that. uh, Yeah. And I hate to say it, like I'm an optimistic person, but we see so many worst case scenarios that, Um, Mm -hmm. I have a pretty good feeling for where things can go wrong (laughs) and at least pointing that Mm -hmm. out. So again, you know, you may decide to do it anyway, but you kind of know where the, where the risky spots are. Yeah. You know what you're getting into. Mm -hmm. So let's talk. um, We've got a few minutes left here. I would like to talk about the trademarks because I will tell you that maybe it's because I have two trademarks that I get a lot of people asking. Um, So (laughs) <laughs> and this is really funny, Autumn, because it's people that haven't started businesses yet, so they don't know what they don't know. <laughs> yes. I and mean, that was me back when. Yeah. Um, no, so no shame I, in that I game. Feel yeah. Yeah. That is exactly right. But they said, so 
um, how do I know when I need to get an LLC and how do I know when I need to get a trademark? And I'm like, okay, those are two extremely different things. Yes. <laughs> so um, when do you recommend to people or is there a way to recommend to people to think about when they might want to get a trademark and what to think about before they take that step? Because I will tell you, I definitely didn't know when I didn't know when I decided to get a trademark and knowing everything I know now, I don't know if I would have done it. Yeah. That's funny. That's something we talked about when we did your legal planning session. I said, what are the things you might uh-huh. want to trade me? You're like, I'm good. <laughs> um, yeah, For now, so, I don't need no trademark. <laughs> yes, yes. So just as starting from ground zero, trademarks protect things like your brand name. So a company name, um, they are meant to educate consumers. So people who are shopping for your products to make sure that they're getting what they're looking for. So it's supposed to distinguish your company or your products from your competitors' products. Um, so common examples are like, you go to the grocery store, you want a Coke, you know that it's a Coke because of the shape of the bottle. That's a trademark. The, what the label looks like, that's a trademark. The name is a trademark. The scripty font that it's written in. All of those things are trademarks so that you know you're not going to accidentally grab a Pepsi when you want a Coke. So that's kind of an overview of what a trademark is. In the online business world, it's generally company names, program names, uh, maybe a tagline or a slogan that you use. Um, it can be your logo if you have a really um, you know, interesting, different one. Um, Copyrights are going to protect your actual content. So we're not going to talk about that, but that is, that's kind of the flip side. A lot of people are confused. What is a copyright? What is a trademark? So for trademarks, um, I, and I just talked with a client this morning about this. I, here is kind of the things I want you to think about when you're like, do I need to register this as a trademark? So first of all, you just buy, if you're using a trademark in your business, um, so for example, my legal roadmap podcast, that is a registered trademark. It's behind me. I don't know if you can see it. Um, <laughs> If you're using it, so you're offering goods or services under that name, you have what are called common law trademarks. So those those are automatic. You don't have to do anything to get those. Um, So I could file a lawsuit even if I hadn't registered that with the USPTO. I have now their state law rights. They don't go across the whole country. They just go in the places where I'm using it. So, but for an online business, we're pretty much all nationwide. So you kind of have a a base level of rights just by using a trademark in your business. Now, it can't be just an idea or like, oh, maybe someday I'll sell X, Y, Z. You have to actually be using it. Um, So you have to prove that that you're using it too. Yes. And when you you start using evidence. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of our, our ground level. So a lot of times if people come to me and they're a brand new business owner or they're starting something new that they've never tried before, I'll often say, let's wait, let's give it a year. Let's see if you really stick with this. Let's see if right. you, um, you know, let's see if your audience likes it. Let's see if it's profitable. Um, so usually mm-hmm. my first question, when someone says they want to register a trademark with the U S patent and trademark office, which is um, about a year long process and several thousand dollars mm-hmm. minimum. Yeah. Um, yep. If you're working with a lawyer <laughs> and there's filing fees. Um, so it's an investment in time and money. So I say, are you yep. making money from this thing? Is this something? Cause sometimes people will come to me with like, Oh, well, I always talk about X, Y, Z. And I'm like, no, are you making money from it? Is it, mm-hmm. is it important to your business? Is it mm-hmm. something that you need really need to protect? Um, so mm-hmm. that's kind of question. Number one, question number two is, Okay. Let's say maybe you're not making money from it. Maybe it is a tagline or like the name of a system you use or a method you teach or something like that. Um, I say, if you saw a competitor using it, would it feel like, like, Oh, I was just stabbed in the heart and you'd be really upset about it. Um, okay. Let's say you are a business that's bigger. And so you have some, um, flexibility with your dollars. So you've got some dollars you could put behind it. Um, So that's kind of the second thing that we think about. And then the third thing is, is this a one-time thing you're going to sell just for a short time? Or is this going to be a long-term part of your business? Because you're going to take a year or longer to get that trademark. And then you actually have to, once you get the trademark certificate, that's kind of step one. Now you have to go stop other people from using it. So it is. And that second part (laughs) is what I did not know. Yeah. So you can actually lose your trademark rights if other people are out there you know, selling things under a similar name and you're not stopping them. So you have to be a little bit aggressive. You have to be willing to um, send a cease and desist letter or get into those, you know, and you can be nice about it. We're very nice about it, but you have to be stern and say like, this is my, I've planted my flag here. You can't Mm -hmm. use this and you have to be willing to take some actions to shut them down if they don't agree. 
Yeah. yeah. And you also have to monitor it on a monthly basis, right? Yes. Yes. You should. And what does that I mean? mean? Yeah. That means it. you should be watching the USPTO filings, or you should have a lawyer who we do this for our clients, um, yeah. who is watching the USPTO filings. The USPTO will deny similar trademarks, but not always. <laughs> they don't catch them all. And there are some things that they don't catch that I'm like, I cannot believe they approve that. We have a registered trademark for basically the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So you should be monitoring and just, um, even not the USPTO, but also the marketplace. So is, is a competitor springing up using it, even if they haven't tried to mm -hmm. register it, because that is diluting your rights. So it is, right. it, it's a lot of work and, um, it makes mm -hmm. sense for a business that has a brand that's worth protecting, but mm -hmm. I will often tell people, you know, let's wait on this. I don't think it's time. Um, I think there's a lot of fear mongering out there with people who are afraid someone else is going to get it or, you know, right. again, that scarcity. Oh, well, I have this brilliant idea. What if someone else registers it? Well, there's things we can do if, if we do get to that point. Um, yeah, but it and is a big expense and a big time suck if for things is. that I've registered a lot of trademarks that by the time we get the certificate, the people are not even using it anymore. So we try to avoid that. That happened to me a little bit. Um, because I first registered expert VA and then I began using virtual expert even more. And I thought, Oh, am I not yeah. going to use expert VA anymore? I know. And fortunately, um, then I figured out how to use both of them and in what capacity to use mm -hmm. both of them. And they, I, I was making money from both of them yeah. before I tried to get them registered and all of that. So I think I kind of accidentally did the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> but it battle. doesn't make me, yeah. yeah, it doesn't make me want to go, what else can I trademark? Yeah. <laughs> well, and the other thing is there is a bit of a risk. I mean, there are some downsides. If you apply to register a trademark and someone else is already using it, you could get on their radar if they're monitoring the USPTO and maybe they never would have been aware of you. Like you're kind of close, mm -hmm. but not really. But now mm -hmm. all of a sudden you're getting a cease and desist letter and you kind of did that to yourself <laughs> with the trademark. Yeah. Filing. So yeah. I actually just talked to somebody this week that that's happened to. Yeah. So um, we always do a yeah. search before we file a trademark application to just mm -hmm. see what else is out mm -hmm. there. And sometimes like we've come up against, oh, CVS has a, a really similar brand. Like I don't want to go up against CVS's lawyers with my no. little, with my little no, client. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah. you want to know what's out there. So thank you so much for sharing that because I think um, that's one of the the misconceptions out there mm -hmm. is well, it's just, sexy that's and what it's I exciting. Thought. Yeah. Yeah. You get a trademark and you're done and yeah, yeah you're one legit. to $2,000 yeah. <laughs> and off you go. Mm -mm, it never stops yeah. or you lose your trademark. Yeah. So thanks for, thanks for sharing that. Yeah. All right. Anything else that you want to share? Because I could talk to you all day long, I but know. we are coming to the end of our time together. So, um, yeah, I what think else I was just, do you want people to know? I want people to know um, if you had asked me what the number one most important legal protection is, it's not a trademark. <laughs> it's probably not setting up an LLC. It is your contracts. Um, and I say that not just because we sell templates, but because almost every time a client comes to me with a sticky situation, I, the first question I ask them is, what does your contract say? And even with somebody infringing your copyrights or your trademarks, often even that comes back to what does your contract say? Because it's often someone you've worked with who is doing this or someone, you know, or have a relationship right. with. Um, and right. so I just can't overemphasize how important it is to just be using contracts in your business, um, having them, getting them signed. They're not as scary as a lot of people think. Both people signing it, not yes. just one. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. And think about if you had to go in front of judge Judy, this is my favorite thing that I say, um, you know, would she be able to read it and make sense of it? You know, she doesn't know your business or what you're doing. Would she be able to see clearly, like, did you do what you were supposed to do or not? And, you know, is it clear? That's what we want. Yeah. No bad surprises. Uh, right. I will tell you that I asked that question, you know, I, again, I train virtual assistants. They come to me and say, I've got this issue with a client. What do I do? And of course, right away I say, what does your contract say? And when they say, I don't have, I didn't one, have one, my heart oh. just sinks. Cause then it's yeah. just kind of messy. Yeah. 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 
the contract isn't a bad thing. It's a good thing because it puts in writing protections for both you and yeah. your client. Yeah. It should be even-handed. I love yeah. a contract. Right. When you're hiring people, doesn't it make you feel good when they have a- Oh my a, gosh. Yeah. Yes. Because I know exactly what I'm going to pay ex- and they know exactly what they're going to receive, exactly yeah. what they're going to do. And we've got it all in writing and we can go forward with that huge trust. Yeah. Yeah. I hired a yeah. website designer. We redid our website this past year. Um, and I, I cannot, t- I referred back to the contract like four times while we were working together because I could not remember mm-hmm. what, like what the scope of the project was. And I wanted to make sure I wasn't taking Absolutely. advantage of her. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, it was, it's helpful for everybody. It is. I do the exact same thing. Um, <laughs> That's why, I mean, I literally will not start working with anyone and this is my onboarding process for my team members until we have a contract in place and I have their W-9 Mm because I do independent contractors. So give me your W-9 and let's get that contract in place and then we can start working. And that's what I teach everyone. Do not do any work until you have that signed contract. Yeah. And it's a huge red flag if a client doesn't want to sign a contract or if a contractor doesn't want to sign a contract. Yeah. 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 I, I used to work with this Walk little boy. Away. Yeah. Who was like, if I, you know, if you need a contract, I can't trust you. And I was like, see, I feel like it's the opposite. <laughs> because exactly. 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 I want to be able to take that to judge Judy. <laughs> the other thing that I find that people don't realize that they need and can get them into trouble is the legal documents for their websites. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So and your privacy policy. The, yep. And your mm-hmm. website terms and conditions. Absolutely. Um, I didn't know when I first set up a website, I had yeah. no idea. And then of course, like a lot of people, I went out and just looked at other people's and I thought, well, what if I just copied theirs? <laughs> really bad idea. <laughs> do not do that. This is one thing where like, if you buy a template for nothing else, buy a template for your privacy policy to make sure it's actually, because that is required by law and it Mm -hmm. is tricky. The regulations are not easy. It is not something you want to just trust that someone else, that your friend did it the right way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That your friend, exactly. (laughs) Or whoever you're following. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, (laughs) Okay. So I could talk about that all day long, but I will stop there. Don't you have like a website package? We do. Um, the, yeah, yeah. The privacy policy and the terms and conditions are bundled. So you get a little discount. Yeah. So you yeah. don't even have to know what you need. Just know you need the website package. Go buy that. You've got it for your website. If you yeah. do nothing else, do that. And it doesn't matter what kind of website you have. Like people say, well, what if I have a Wix website? What if I have this? Yeah. It doesn't matter. You need it for every website. Yeah. So there's helpful um, prompts to let you you customize it to your own business. So very easy. In about 20 minutes, you're up and running. It is very easy. Okay. Well, Autumn, thank you so much. We will include links to your website, links to the templates. Um, If you can't tell, I think she's amazing. Her law firm is amazing. I highly recommend her no matter what level your business is at. Um, make sure that you go grab that free checklist if you're brand new. Um, and that will give you an idea of where you are and where you want to go. So yeah. Autumn, thank you so much for being here today. It's always so fun to talk to you, Kathy. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Dare to Leap. Say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com. There you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share your feedback and join her community. Join us again soon on Dare to Leap. Until then.